Hi, I'm Russell from Acuity Instruments, and in this video, we're gonna tell you about our new K-Series fuel rails, fittings, and center feed fuel lines. We're gonna tell you a little bit about all of the products in the lineup, how they work together to work for your specific fuel setup, and give you some tips to make sure that the installation goes smoothly. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about our K-Series fuel rails. They come in a satin anodized finish and are available in black, purple, red, and teal. Each one has a 1 8 NPT gauge port on the top, so you can run an optional fuel pressure gauge if you'd like, but the rails are supplied with a plug in case you don't want to use it. They also feature three Dash 8 O-ring boss ports so that you can run a variety of fuel line setups for your particular application. The Dash 8 O-ring boss ports support up to 1,000 horsepower when paired with appropriate fittings, lines, and fuel pumps. It comes with class 10.9 zinc plated hardware and the Dash 8 O-ring boss ports work with most aftermarket Dash 8 O-ring boss fittings. Each rail features accommodations for the OEM injector retaining clips. While you don't have to use them, it does make life a lot easier when you're removing the rail for service in the future. Next, I want to tell you a little bit about the fittings that we sell for the rails. The reason that these are important is because they're going to help you configure the rail for your particular fuel line setup. All the fittings come with an FKM O-ring that's compatible with both gasoline and E85. They're made from 7075, so they're a bit stronger than traditional 6061 fittings and more resistant to damage when wrenching on them during installation or removal. All of these fittings fit on all rails that accept Dash 8 O-ring boss fittings. They feature a matte silver anodized finish for corrosion resistance, and all of the flow fittings feature tapered internal geometry to reduce pressure drop through the fitting. The first fitting is our long style 516 SAE Quick Connect fitting. This is primarily used on 8th gen Civic SIs when using the OEM fuel line, although it's compatible with all other 516 SAE Quick Connect female connectors. The next fitting is a shorter version of the previous one. It's our short format 516 SAE Quick Connect fitting. It's primarily used on 7th gen Civic SIs, RSXs, and 9th gen Civic SIs. It's also compatible with all 516 SAE Quick Connect female fittings. We also offer AN fittings in Dash 6 and Dash 8 so that you can connect to Dash 6 and Dash 8 braided lines. These are useful for center feed setups, side feed setups, return setups, and for the Dash 8, high horsepower setups, especially those using E85 that have higher than normal fuel consumption. Also, we offer a Dash 8 plug that's been hollowed out in the middle to reduce weight. These are commonly used on any of the ports that a fuel line won't be run to. Last but not least, we offer a 1 8 NPT adapter. This is really useful for running a fuel pressure gauge on a side port when you want a more subtle look than a setup that uses a fuel pressure gauge on the top of the rail. We also have some very nice fuel pressure gauges to go with these rails. They're made by Marshall Instruments out of California and are available in satin black and chrome finishes. They feature 1 8 NPT ports, so they fit on our rails on the top or the optional side port, and they come with glycerin filling for vibration resistance. We also offer a very nice Dash 6 center feed line that's compatible with the 7th, 8th, and 9th gen Civic SIs, as well as the RSX. It features a quick connect fitting for the firewall, so it attaches easily just like OEM. On the fuel rail side, it has a Dash 6 AN female fitting, that can fit on most aftermarket fuel rails that feature a center feed port with a Dash 6AN adapter. It also features a bracket that mounts to the back of the transmission to securely attach the fuel line as it's routed from the firewall to the fuel rail. For those of you wanting to make custom fuel setups, we also offer our quick connect fittings separately so that you can mate it to your own Dash 6AN lines. As a service item, we also offer our Dash 8 O-Ring Boss O-Rings that are compatible with gasoline and E85 if you ever damage an O-Ring and need a replacement. These are also compatible with all Dash 8 O-Ring Boss fittings for other rails. Next, we're gonna talk about how to select fittings for your specific application. First, I'd like to show you how to set up the rail to work with an OEM K-Series fuel line. At the connection where the fuel line attaches, you'll use a 516 SAE Quick Connect fitting. For the center port and the other unused side port, you'll use a Dash 8 O-Ring Boss plug. For the 8th Gen Civic SI, use our longer SAE Quick Connect fitting. In the case of the 7th Gen SI, the 9th Gen SI, and the RSX, use our shorter Quick Disconnect fitting. For vehicles using a Dash 6AN line connected to the center port or side port in a returnless setup, use one Dash 6AN fitting 
and two Dash 8 O-Ring Boss plugs. This is a setup that's common to the 7th Gen Civic Si, 8th Gen Civic Si, 9th Gen Civic Si, and the Acura RSX. If you're using a Dash 6 return setup, like has become very popular on K-Swap applications, use two of our Dash 6 AN adapters and one Dash 8 plug in the middle port. For high horsepower applications and those using E85, consider using our Dash 8 AN adapters for the side ports and Dash 8 O-Ring Boss plug for the center port. For those of you planning to mount a fuel pressure gauge to the rail, you have two options. You can either mount the gauge to the top port on the fuel rail itself, or if you'd like a stealthier look, you can use our 1 8 NPT adapter to mount the gauge to the side port. Note that you can only use this adapter on a side port when one of the side ports remains open, like on returnless setups or setups using an OEM fuel line. We'd also like to make a couple of notes about users who will be installing this rail on a car that's already got a Kraftworks supercharger kit. There's two things that you need to know. First, instead of using the OEM spacers and the mounting screws that we supply with the rail, use the spacers and mounting screws from the Kraftworks kit. Second, for the plug that goes in the rail on the side of the rail closest to the supercharger, you're going to need a low profile Dash 8 O-Ring Boss plug. We don't sell the plug, but it's a very common style. If you go to a local hydraulic supply warehouse or online, you can find a low profile steel zinc plated Dash 8 O-Ring Boss plug. This will give you the proper clearance with the mounting plate for the Kraftwerk supercharger so that you've got clearance between the plate and the rail. Now that you know what fittings you need for your specific application, we're gonna give you some tips to help make sure the installation goes smoothly. A lot of times people feel they really need to tighten fittings to get them to seal. The truth is there's often standards for how tight many of these fittings and screws need to be. And if you adhere to those standards, everything will go very smoothly and seal very well. And in the future, it'll be easy to disassemble because it hasn't been over tightened. First, let's discuss NPT fittings, particularly the 1 8 NPT on the backside of our gauges. NPT threads seal by having a tapered thread on the male and female side and thread sealant between the two threads to fill the gaps so that once it's snug, you get a liquid tight seal. There's no need to over torque the threads. There's a standard for how much to tighten it and it consistently works to get a leak free seal. Always use a liquid PTFE sealant to seal the threads to one another. Avoid using a PTFE tape as pieces of the tape can become dislodged in the fuel supply and clog injectors. For 1 8 NPT fittings, such as the one used on our gauges, you want three to six threads of engagement between the fitting and the rail. There's no need to make it any tighter if all of the parts are in spec. What we recommend is that you hand tighten the fitting into the rail, give it one full rotation, and then rotate it as much as is needed to get it to align with the rail. One very important tip when installing a gauge is to never tighten it substantially by holding the case. Instead, you need to put a wrench on the hex flats on the underside of the gauge. Over tightening the gauge by holding the case can cause damage between the case and the fitting on the backside, which can lead to premature leaks. Next, let's talk about all of the Dash 8 O-Ring Boss fittings that fit into the end ports and center port on the rail. O-Ring Boss fittings seal by using an O-Ring that's pre-installed on the fitting. What to look out for when installing these is a gap between the flange and the port it's being threaded into, or after you've pressurized the system, any part of the O-ring protruding out of that gap. If at any point when the system is pressurized, you can see the O-ring starting to come out, you've installed the fitting incorrectly and insufficiently tight. What you need to do at that point is depressurize the system, remove the fitting, inspect the O-ring for damage, replace it if it is damaged, but you can reuse it if it looks good, and then reinstall the fitting into the port such that the flange bottoms out on the port itself. Next, let's talk about AN connections, particularly the Dash 6 and Dash 8 AN connections on our Dash 8 O-Ring Boss adapter fittings. AN fittings seal using a tapered face on the end of the fitting and a mating tapered face inside of the female connection, normally an AN hose that the fitting mates into. There's no need to over tighten these fittings either. There's a standard for how to tighten them based on the size. And as long as you comply to that and your fittings have no damage, you should get a satisfactory seal. 
For a Dash 6AN fitting, you should thread the female connector onto the male connector until it is hand tight. From there, tighten an additional 60 to 90 degrees. As a rule of thumb, that's equivalent to one to one and a half flats of rotation. No additional rotation is needed. That should get a perfect seal for you. A Dash 8AN connection is very similar. Again, you're gonna take the female fitting and tighten it onto the male fitting as tight as you can by hand. Then using a wrench, you're going to rotate the fittings an additional 75 to 105 degrees. As a rule of thumb, that's approximately one and a quarter to one and three quarters flats on the hex fitting. Another important tip is to always remember to use the two OEM thermal spacers that go under the mounting tabs between the fuel rail and the manifold that it's mounting to. These spacers are important for two reasons. First, they set the height of the rail, making sure that you're not tightening the rail down too much so that it crushes the injectors. Second, it thermally isolates the rail from the manifold, meaning there's less heat transfer from the manifold to your rail, heating your fuel. If you need the part number for the OEM thermal washers, you'll find it etched on the bottom of the rail. Use of the OEM injector retaining clips is optional, but we strongly encourage it because it makes servicing the fuel rail and fuel system that much easier in the future if the fuel rail needs to be removed. Plus, they help to set injector heights so the injectors aren't just floating in the ports. Another important tip is to check the quality of all the O-rings on your injectors before installing the injectors in your manifold or your rail. If any of the O-rings have become damaged with cracks or tears, they should be replaced with new ones. Also, always make sure all of the O-rings are sufficiently lubricated. You can either use a fuel-safe O-ring lubricant, or if you're in a pinch, you can use a little bit of gasoline as a lubricant. Also, always make sure all of the ports that the injectors are going into are clean. It's not uncommon for the ports on old intake manifolds to become corroded with oxidized aluminum. If this happens, you can take some fine Scotch-Brite and clean the oxidation out of the port. Our last tip is to not overdo it with the mounting screws. You should use 9.8 Newton meters or 7.2 foot pounds of torque when tightening the screws. Use a six millimeter Allen drive. There's no need to tighten them any tighter. Those are the specs from Honda and they'll work perfectly. If you have any questions about how to set the rail up for your particular application, feel free to reach out to us through the contact us form on our website. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our Instagram as well. I'm Russ with Acuity Instruments and I'll see you on our next tech video.